You have it? Yeah. Okay, it's Sunday, February 2nd. And we're in Auckland, New Zealand. Actually, we're at the top of Auckland, the highest point, Mount Eden, Maunga, Maunga Thau in Maori. Maori. <laughs> we have a beautiful panoramic view of this city. In terms of, of uh, square miles or square kilometers, it's the fourth largest city in the world, a little over a million in population, which is uh, just under a third of the population of the entire country of New Zealand. We have a beautiful view of downtown and all around us the city spreads out. It's still going around. We're going to do a 360 degree sweep here. Okay, take two. Oh, yes, no, I see it. We left uh, Los Angeles last night, lost a day. So we went from the 31st of January to the 2nd of February. And we'll never see the 1st of February 1997 ever. Seems to me when we go back, though, we get two days, don't we? Right, we get to do whatever day it is twice. We're going to see if we can zoom in on our hotel, which is the Sheraton, down to the right there. No, that's not going to do it for us. Well, that's the Sheraton. See the beige building with the red letters? Okay. Looking at here. <laughs> This is something very interesting. Here's, here's Wellington, and all around in a circle with arrows is pointing to things that we can see from where we are. You said this is Wellington? or this Here's is... Wellington in the center of this bronze medallion. Oh, I see. Wellington, here. Okay. And in the first circle out are the names and the distances of the things that can be seen from here. Um, various distances, Bucklands is this way, other things are this way. These are things in New Zealand. Um, and in the final circle out here are places in the world. Here's Toronto, 13,893 kilometers. New York. New York is this way. 14,197 kilometers. New York, Washington. The Panama Canal, Panama Canal. Here's Los Angeles, San Francisco, Vancouver, Honolulu, Suva, London over here, Tokyo. Monday morning, beautiful morning in Auckland. Uh, sunny, cool, but nice. Um, we walked down to the harbor area, and lo and behold, here's the Huey too, right here in front of us. Must have come in last night. I haven't seen her since San Diego. We're about to take a ferry. Are you filming? Yeah. We're about to take a ferry over to Devonport, the island right over there in the harbor. Uh, we're going to go on a little ferry that's coming in, looks like this, but called the Kia. And we're going to spend at least the morning over there. We understand it's charming and quaint and souvenirish and okay. all those good things. Okay. <laughs> And here comes our boat right now. So here we are, off and running, leaving the dock. Gavin over yonder. I have another camera buff. My QE2. And behold, Devonport. Here we are. And behold? It's like and God created God created Devonport? Yes, he did. <laughs> Along with San Diego. <laughs> Restaurant at America's Cup Bar. Uh oh. They're proud to have the America's Cup here. 
I just got through telling Ruthie that I think that my feet are about 10 years older than I am. Right now we're at the top of Mount Victoria. You can see where we came in on the little ferry slip down there. This is Devonport. We have walked up the street here, Main Street. There's lots of interesting little shops there. We've done that um, and we'll eventually go back. But in the meantime, we've climbed up here on top of the mountain. Over to the right there, you can see the QE2. The QE2 we photographed just a few minutes ago, and that's where uh, the slip was. We left in the ferry here, there, and we came around over to this ferry slip here. Okay. Now, from this standpoint of geography, we can swing around up over here. This is the very top of Mount Victoria, and as we continue to sweep over here, you can see some of the hinterlands of the uh, Devonport. But one of the interesting geological formations is directly across the strait here. This is a volcano. It arose from the sea about 600 years ago, and it last erupted about 285 years ago. But it is uh, classified as one of the world's youngest volcanoes. And that's it for now. It's called Rangitoto, which in Maori means red sky. Always showing off red. We have two nice bronze reliefs here on top of uh, Mount Victoria. This particular one here shows the peak of uh, Mount Victoria uh, in Devonport. The one over here gives a much more complete um, geography uh, of the area. And Ruthie's going to tell us about that. Okay. We're right here, Devonport Island. This is Rangitoto, the volcano out there, the young volcano out there. This shows the Waitemata Harbor in here, which is the big Auckland Harbor. And this is really interesting because there's just this narrow little... Where are you? I'm over at the harbor. Okay. Okay, I'm coming back to the relief. This is really interesting because the, the North Island is almost two islands. There's just this narrow little isthmus of land here at Auckland that connects the southern part of the North Island with the northern part of the North Island. Just, it's less than a mile. It's only about a kilometer. Now let's wide. go over to the barrier island. Okay, on Wednesday, on Wednesday, we're going out here to Great Barrier Island. We're going to fly out, try to spend the night, come back Thursday, and pick up our car. Tuesday morning. Another bus tour of the city, but this time we can hop on and hop off. We're in Parnell at the Parnell Rose Gardens. The weather's a little iffy, but we're willing to take a chance. And the roses normally bloom here from December, January. There's still lots of bloom to see, lots of color. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to go rose gardening this morning, right? Right. Go. Go. This is a Lolita. The sign says that these are the Golden Jubilee. What's the name of the rose over there? Yonder? No, the one with the jacket on. Oh, that's, that's the, the thorny rose. Actually, when you've seen one rose, you've pretty much seen them all.
They're well, on. Well, it wasn't business class, and there was no movie, <laughs> no drinks. Well, we just checked into Tippy and Bob's, and look what we've got here. Ruth, you want to speak into the camera? Boy, here we have our own South Sea Island. Isn't this magnificent? We flew out. Uh, a flight to remember, certainly. Maybe a flight to forget. <laughs> Let's go take a look at our room. Yeah. Nice room. Nice room. Nice apartment. Wow. Look, right well, if we ever come back to New Zealand, we could come out here and just spend a week. Yeah, we can. We can stay a week now if you want to. This is a little lagoon near the Tippy and Bob's Holiday Lodge, where we're staying at Trifuna on Great Barrier Island, 90, 90 kilometers out into Haruki Gulf, which separates Auckland from the open Pacific. It's, uh, let's see, it's Thursday morning. We spent the night out here on Great Barrier Island at Trifina Harbor. We had a very pleasant cruise up the coast. We're now in the little harbor of Fitzroy. We've um, there's our sturdy craft. It's a catamaran hull. Must make about 20, 25 knots because we zipped right along. And um, we've walked up to this little hill place, and we're right up in the downtown Fitzroy. What's the blue plate, blue plate special here today? <laughs> it's cracked. <laughs> Anything good in there? To no, eat? no. There's. Uh, you go through. We could buy some crackers and some cheese, ice cream, fruit, that okay. kind of stuff. I'll go look. Maybe we do best just to eat on the. The. Um, well, I'm. We think Saturday, Saturday, we're in Paihia, a little resort town on the Bay of Islands on the way far north coast of the Northern Island of New Zealand. It's just beautiful here, 150 islands out in, the, in this little bay. And it's where the Europeans first came and the, uh, right across the way, right over there, the Treaty of Waitanga was signed between the European settlers and the Maoris. Which uh, the New Zealanders consider their founding. We had about a five-hour drive up from Auckland yesterday, and we finally found this place. Ruthie was kind of the bird dog that, that ferreted it out. But we happened upon this place here, and we stayed here last night, and it was so nice that we're going to stay here again tonight. The first thing we asked this morning was, "Is there a laundromat in town?" And they said, "No, there's not." but there's one on the third floor. So we're doing quite well here. And as the day goes along, we'll take more photographs. And New Zealand this morning is absolutely gorgeous. The coffee was good too. Okay, I'm recording. How's the water? Oh, it's, um, I think refreshing would be the best word. <laughs> it's a little bit chilly. But I think this afternoon it'll be really nice. Look how dense the growth is up over the side of the hill. Yeah, it's really tropical 
almost jungle-ish. Here's our hotel, no. our big pink hotel. Very interesting architecture. Nice pool up there. Pool is out in front of all of the rooms, and our room was off to the right. We're on the site of the signing of the Waitangi Treaty in 1840, the founding document of New Zealand. Behind us is the Bay of Islands. We can see our hotel a short distance over there, and behind me is the Maori. There's our hotel, the pink building there. And there's the town of Paihia, the Bay of Islands. It's a gorgeous day. Can't do that, you're going into the sun. Okay. <laughs> Let's go around over this way, huh? Keep coming, you're fine. <laughs> uh, the European house is the treaty house. <clears throat> and the other building is the Maori Meeting House that was built as a commemoration in 1940 on the 100th anniversary of the signing of the treaty. And it's supposedly unique in that it combines carving elements of various Maori tribes. Let's go look. Okay. On roof. This is the treaty house and we've just been through it. It was built in the 1830s and it was prefabricated in Sydney and shipped over here. It's filled with period pieces, all mm -hmm. pier style. Here's the garden, it's just beautiful. The whole place is lovely. A big broad lawn that looks down to the bay. Three, two, one. Now we're heading over towards the Maori Meeting House. Ah. Say something spectacular. Do I have it? Got it. Thank you. We're still on the site of the tree location, but we're down by the bay now. And um, this is one of the Mari war canoes. Uh, ironically and interestingly enough, we missed the sailing. Three days ago, it was in the water. You can see the, uh, the tracks underneath here with the little dollies, and they just roll it right down into the water. It will uh, take up to 100 warriors, and you can see the paddles up behind. And Ruthie, come on over here and pull it, shoot, it, shoot right down through the center of the hull so people can see the immensity of it. Um, actually, for our next cruise, we've been thinking about booking on this boat. What a, what a wonderful idea. 12.15. We left Paihia this morning about 8.20. We've driven through Auckland. We're heading towards, you should pardon the expression, Hamilton. We're having lunch, obviously. What do you have there? Hamburger. Actually, the Audubon Special. And I have one of those uh, Lion Red beers and a hamburger, too. So, see you in Hamilton, right? Well, here we are at the Raglan Surf Shop, and we're going to see if we can't find a t-shirt for James. You find anything over there, kid? I'm looking. I can't. I found a nice shirt, but not the right size. Maybe we ought to get him one of those surfboards over there, I suppose. How much are those? Back of his shirt? Yeah. That's the back. Is there anything yeah. on the front? Uh, yeah, it's the same thing, but much smaller. Oh. You probably got lucky. <laughs> we need an extra large. Yeah. Double XL? How that big is he? Well, he likes his clothes very loose. So. Yeah, I um, remember. <laughs> Well, we've just done the exercise going through the cave and seeing the glow worms. Unfortunately, no photography is involved or um, permitted in the cave. This is where we went into the cave, and then we came out by boat through the caves down below here. That doesn't show the waterway too well. It was very, very enjoyable, and we're impressed with the cycle of the the glow one. Why tomorrow?
Waitomo, not Waitomo, Waitomo caves with the glow worms. This is what they look like. It looks like stars. We couldn't take pictures inside. Oh, they these are their fishing lines. They catch their bugs in them. This is the larva stage. If anyone would like to say hello and wave, I'd be glad to have them. Hello and wave. <laughs> name and name, rank and serial number, please. Bob Lander, Detroit, Michigan. Why don't you? Margaret Lander. Secret from Düsseldorf. Uh, bitte sprechen Sie auf Deutsch. Das kann ich nicht. Gut, auch von Düsseldorf. Ah, sehr gut. Uh, camera's on you. Is it my goodness? <laughs> okay. Excuse me, I didn't get all of that. What, would, what was the last thing you said? Cheers. Uh, <laughs> oh, they're good. I was in the morning and rode it up to uh, Port Fitzroy. So, after the folks are talking, this is what's going to happen to us. I have no idea what's in these steam kettles here. But looks down around here. And here. And dessert. Nice way to live. <laughs> oh boy, it sure looks good. Mmm, good. I am not eating again. <laughs> You'll have to explain that in a little more detail here. <laughs> I don't have to. <laughs> Is that pretty good there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when was whipped cream bad? <laughs> How's everything up at this end of the table? First class. <laughs> you! Go, put the lens cap on. Do something. Would you like another piece of lamb? <laughs> what? He's healthy? The sign of the tear will cast that the token gesture of his. Uh oh. What's happening here? <laughs>
11th. We're on the outskirts of Rotorua where we spent last night. We've come out here to Rainbow Farm and we're going to see a farm show. Sheep shearing, egg gathering, cow milking, all those great things. Koreans. <laughs> Koreans shopping. There's a Korean on a ram over there. I think you said it all. Great sights in here. This is a crop here too. 36 Ford. And a 1922 Dodge. Thousands and thousands of Koreans. The show begins in just a few minutes, and I think we'll probably see these sheep from the front side. But presently, we're only getting the rear view of them. This is their bath place. They've all just been washed down. And um, I particularly like the big Louie up there. Curly? Yeah, Curly. Curly, Mo, and Jack. <laughs> now, this is the front end of those sheep that we saw a little while ago. Looks as if we're going to see more of them. And we're in the theater right now. And we've got people on the right side, on the left side, and behind us.
You're very nice. <laughs> You want this? You're very particular. This is the Ngara Lara Tu Tu Tuatara cooking pot. And where are we? Oh, we're at the Fakera Weira Thermal Reserve. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows that. The Maoris actually used to cook in these uh, thermal pots. Hmm. Did you get the name of these mud pools? Yes. Why? Why? Why rare where rewa? I can see see that one right there. Yeah, I see. It. I could see you can see water in there. Is that hot? This is real this steam is really hot. Oh. Well don't touch hot. it. What's what? over to your right? It's like the whole world's coming apart, doesn't it? Eventually it's supposed to go up at 30 meters? Golds here in the Wellington Botanic Garden, which by a happy coincidence is right across the street from our hotel. We're going to climb up the hill. I'm not sure we've made the right decision. It's a long way up, but once we get up there, we'll take the cable car back down and uh, explore some of downtown. Yes, have you had a nice day, Ruthie? No, <laughs> to be quite honest. Driving through the mountains was a bear. Well, some days the bear gets you and some days you get the bear, right? Well, today was the Look, day the bear got cat. us. Well, tomorrow will be February 14th, Valentine's Day. And when I saw this patch of flowers, I thought, gosh, that looks like a valentine. And I better get something for my love because tomorrow will be Valentine's Day. and. We will have been buried a whole month. Buried or married? <laughs> Did you misspeak? <laughs> you said buried. You got a pretty smile, lady. <laughs> oh, well, there's a valent There's your Valentine's. <laughs> oh, I'm just absolutely underwhelmed. <laughs>
Well, here's a better view of the cable car. We just run it, um, ventured down into um, Wellington on. Nice smooth ride. It only takes a couple of minutes. Anything to add about the cable ride? It's the best part of the day. <laughs> <laughs> that and lunch, I guess. So here this we are. Spectacular view. On top of the hill. Wellington is kind of crowded up against this hill. And down here is Wellington Harbor, where uh, container ships come in. And just a little bit to our left is the Picton Ferry. Friday morning, and we're on the ferry to Picton. We left our nice little car in, uh, oh, I forgot to take a picture of it, in um, Wellington. Well, quick, take a picture of it. <laughs> and uh, we're underway at the Cook Strait, heading for the South Island, which we can see over there, although it's not going to be as short a journey as it would look from here. Let me see if I can zoom in on it, okay? Yeah. Okay, I've zoomed in on the island. That's where we're headed. Now, this is where we've been. Goodbye, Wellington. Welcome to the South Island. <laughs> so we're in the channel on the entry into Picton Park. Beautiful along the Now we're pulling around into the channel going up to Picton. And in the distance you can see Picton. Our hotel will be right up on the side of that hill. We've, we've checked into the Picton Motor Inn. Is that what this place Ancient is called? Ancient Mariner. Oh, Ancient Mariner. Okay. And uh, our crossing was much, much smoother than this. Thank goodness. I don't know what they do with the cars and the horses and the train cars. And so I'm going to switch now out the window. Okay. And we have this view, and out over there is our ferry. Yonder the ferry. Yeah, and so we made it, and now we're going to sally forth with the town over, and then maybe we'll come back and try this swimming pool down here, which looks rather inviting, I would say. Now, it should be pretty evident that life all at once has got considerably better. This is our nice swimming pool. Water's a bit chilly, though. From our motel, we see this beautiful hill up behind us. And the harbor. It's about 9 o'clock on Saturday morning. Here's our little red car. Ruthie is up there. And we're right on the east coast line. We come to this little seal colony, and down below you can see the seals. And I think that they're having their mid-morning rest, because they're out in the far rocks there on the right, straight out ahead, and then right down here, there's a whole bunch of them.
magnificent coastline and we're enjoying every minute of it. Well, we finally, we find ourselves in the middle of a nice horse show here. There's some beautiful horses. Don't have a real good view because we're kind of into the sun. I'm not quite sure what activities will be going on here. We're approaching Christ Church now. We're probably a hundred kilometers out, but we're right along on the coastline. roadside stand we stop them they sell crayfish and so this is going to be my mid-morning snack and uh, then we'll see if we can't find a, a peanut butter sandwich for Ruthie. Hot dog. Mm. Where are you? Um, I'm, I'm at Christchurch. You don't have to swear. Christchurch. Huge big square here. Old public buildings. Lots of good places to eat. And some of the nastiest, most territorial seagulls I ever saw. Like this one over here? Well, listen to them. They're just... They state their claim and then they let you know. And they raise their hackles. Of the church. And the church plaza. And some of the accessories. We had a difficult time getting a hotel because this is the weekend that they're having the English cricket match plus the big flower show. Here's some of the scenes of the flower show. Ruth, this way. Thank you. Here we are at the old River Avon. And we the flower show. And there is this. And there is this. And there is this. And this. <laughs> On our way Sunday morning from Christchurch on the west coast of the South Island to Greymouth on the uh, east coast of the South Island and we're crossing the 
the spine, the backbone of this island through some absolutely incredible mountains. We have never seen anything like it. In places they are unbelievably arid with these huge uh, rock slides on them. They're very, very rugged, high. We've just come through Arthur's Pass at 900 meters. We're looking down this unbelievable gorge and uh, the clouds are, are hitting the tops of these peaks. Actually, they're fairly low down in this gorge. We're so high. It's just a spectacular country. Neither one of us has ever seen anything quite like it. There's snow on the high peaks. It's a bit nippy, but the sun is very warm. Good morning. It's Monday, the 16th, 17th. <laughs> And uh, we're in Franz Josef on the west coast of the South Island. <clears throat> Behind us are... Our motel. Oh, uh. here's our motel, the Punga Grove, brand new. We have sleeping for at least five in there. This whole, this whole wing here is us. Quite palatial accommodations. What's the grandest sight of all? Well, it's, are you filming? Yeah. It's cleared this morning. It cleared during the night. These mountains were shrouded in clouds yesterday afternoon when we arrived, and we believe that what we're looking at is Mount Tasman and Mount Cook beyond it. Look at the snow up there and the glacier coming down. It's gorgeous this morning. It's only about 7.20, 7.25. We're going to hop in the car and go on up there and see if we can get a closer view, right? Right driven out to a car park a couple of miles out of town. Behind King is the Franz Joseph Glacier. We'll get better shots of it later. Is that somebody down there in the... Yes. No? Okay, you're on. Well, you're on. I'm on. There's the glacier. It, it creeps forward and retreats not too long ago. It covered the whole valley here. This is, there's actually a river over here on the far side of this valley. We can hear it, the Waiho River. And this is one of these absolutely amazing stream beds. We've crossed a lot of them uh, coming over yesterday. Look how the mountain is leaking up there. Got waterfalls all over the place. Get this one back here. Is this uh, Mount Tasman directly in front of us? No. It is the something peaks. Okay. Air is fresh, just like Yosemite. Boy. The snowy knob up here, up on the right, mm -hmm. is Mount Rune. The next one over is called the Bismarck Peaks. Mm -hmm. Over here, <clears throat> this one with no snow, the rough one up there is called Goat Path. Now, if we were 2,000 feet up in the air, we could see Mount Tasman and Mount Cook. What do you say we go 2,000 feet up in the air? That kind of chilly? Ah, icicles! Right, something like a little glacier run off. Wow. So this is Ruthie's stream. And this is where Ruthie's stream comes from. Well, it's kind of a bumpy road up to the glacier, but Ruthie's doing fine. She's almost there. So 
Hello. This is Franz Joseph Glacier. We're pretty close to it. We're going to chip off a little ice for our cocktails tonight. Well, what are you going to do this afternoon? Go look at the boards. Go look at the, um, the 
only white heron nesting area in New Zealand. Mm. Kokutu. Mm. What are you doing out there in the rainforest? Reading. Mm. Mm. Well, I've got some steaks over in the refrigerator there and a bottle of red wine so when we come back from seeing the birds we'll have a little steak dinner. What was the name of this rainforest? Lowland That's one of the worst years I've ever had, but that's just nature, and yes. it happens occasionally. Normally they do well. It's um, Monday afternoon, and we're walking back through the bush, the lowland rainforest. We've been to the Heron Preserve. We came over by van and jet boat, which was really exciting. And I guess we're going to get back that way, too. Um, now we know what to expect. Uh, this forest is really incredible. Dark and deep and very full of vegetation. Up here we have an owl. He's not happy having us here. 
He didn't like my flash going off, and he's looking decidedly grumpy. How about talking into my face? Tell me where you are. <laughs> oh. Are you filming? I am. Wednesday morning. Nineteenth. Nineteenth? <laughs> Queenstown by Lake Hakatipu. Um, these are the hungriest ducks. They're all, look how skinny they are. They've never been fed before. What's the name of that hill over there, do you know? No, but behind you are the Remarkables. You can't film them right now because the sun's over them. Up on the hill there is our motel and you can see our room right there. This is a room where I, or a hotel I stayed seven years ago when I was here. And now we're going to go uptown and book on the gondola after the ducks have been fed, right? Yes. King is filming the gondola ride that goes up 400 and some meters. And uh, we're going to go up it here in about mm, 45 minutes or so. Look around up top. Then I'll ride it back down and not sure how King's going to get back down. He's not going to ride the gondola down. How is that? Couldn't be better. This is downtown, the visitor's center for downtown um, Queenstown. And you can see how beautiful the background is. There's that big hill over there. Cathedral is placed by the best player anywhere on the board they like. Um, opposing player, he plays their piece. So I should, I should play a piece? Yeah. Now you want to you get close to the border so you can block off an area that I can't use. That's great. So she's playing, closing there. I'm going to try and stop here. I'm getting to the border. The object of the game is to, to be the, gain as much space and yeah. stop the, the opponent. And the one that the one that can't finally can't play loses, right? Right, that's right. 
Okay. Also, if I were to block off an area that had one of your pieces in, then I can take your piece out. If it has more than one, I cannot. Show me the larger set too, would you please? Yeah, Cathedral, which is now $795 for this piece. It was $1,000, but it's been reduced. That's huge, isn't it? Look at the size mm. of the pieces. There's, there's the cathedral. Yeah. The cathedral isn't this is fascinating. Yeah. Wow. Beautifully built. This, really Did you make those yourself? <laughs> <laughs> no, unfortunately not, no. Thank you. Okay, we started our trip up in the gondola and we're moving along at quite a good clip. Up we go, up, up, up. It's pretty steady now, it's a little rocky at the beginning. Still higher, there's the lake and the town below us. The mountains are called the Remarkables and they really are. Another shot of the lake, large lake, Wakatipu. This is how King is going to get back down. goes. Oh. Looks like he's getting quite a nice ride. The fellow he's with says he's done over 5,000 jumps, so that made me feel a little better. Back and forth. Nice, nice rod. I can hear them talking out there. <laughs> there they are. Oh, he's gliding over. River. And I think there they are on the ground. That looks like the chute anyway. Here we go, swinging down. There's King, waiting at the bottom. Okay, so give us a blow by blow. Uh, well, All in a day's work, right? The airplane caught fire and we jumped down at about 3,000 feet. And then an eventful trip down. Uh, but it was grand, I do wish you'd been with me. Well, it's Thursday morning, about 7.15. Obviously, the sun is coming up. When morning gilds the skies, as the song goes. Quiet over the lake, except for the ducks. I want to pan in on your face. My face? Yeah. <laughs> My morning face? <laughs> And, are you recording? Yeah. I'm flying over to Milford Sound this morning all by my little self. I'm armed with a raincoat, a hat, three cameras, my journal. I'm going to fly over about 8 o'clock, that is, if the planes fly. And then I'll do the boat cruise on the sound <clears throat> and then fly back. 
and I should get back here to Queenstown about noon. And so we have our fingers crossed that the trip goes. So we finally got to the airport here. Ruthie's all ready to go. And, uh, and here's her airplane right here. And it won't be long now. Pretty airplane. Mount Cook Airlines.
Jeffrey Ramby, Tim of the Lions, Taylor Williamson's point will enter into Harrison's Cove. Harrison's Cove coming up on the left cap. One of a few places on the field where ships of any size come out from South Africa, the honour of Captain John Dono. This is the highest amount of 2,000 metres. Uh, Miter Peak is uh, something over 1,600 metres. Well, coming into the Back to the, the head of the sound. Here's this uh, Lady Bowen waterfall again. You can only see part of it. Here's the where the cruise ships. No, that's the hotel. The cruise ships leave around the corner. And over behind these trees is where that little airport is. And we're, when we leave, we're going to fly up this valley and see the Sutherland Falls, which are 2,000 feet high. I hope I'll be on the right side of the plane for that. Here's the Bowen Falls again. I gave up very quickly. And here's the little ship harbor. We've got some steep ones here, haven't we? Yeah. Off the boat now, and there's just a sea of tour buses. Isn't this awful? CSS stands for what? Twin Screw Steamer. It's one of a number of boats that used to service the old uh, the, the sheep stations out along Lake Wapatiku, the, the remote stations, and it would take supplies and bring the sheep in and transport people, and it's the last of its breed. What year was she built? Uh, she was built, well, she was built in... Uh, Dunedin. Dunedin, and, and then taken apart and trans, transported by train to the south end of this lake, which is 85 kilometers long. And there she was reassembled uh, in the summer, or actually the winter of 1912, and she was commissioned in October of 1912. And anybody who's older than she is gets to sail on her free. I don't quite qualify for that. But she also has a locomotive type boiler that operates at 180 psi. Two triple expansion steam uh, reciprocating engines, each developing 500 horsepower with a maximum speed of 13 knots. We'll tell you more as we go along. We didn't mention that the uh, TS Unstaw is coal fired, and there's our shipment of coal. And it looks like the people are going aboard right now, so we're going to join the uh, happy throng. Let's go, Dick.
Friday morning, the 21st of February. We've just left um, Queenstown and we're on our way to Dunedin. But we had to stop here in Cromwell to see if we couldn't find some fresh fruit. So we'll keep looking around here. Maybe some nice big apricots. This is a, an overview of the octagon which is located in the center of um, 
Dunedin, and as you can see, uh, it is directly a blow below the St. Paul's Episcopal Church, and directly behind that, which you can't see, is our motel. This is the city hall, and we got here on a Saturday when they're having a festival, and we've been looking around, we'll look around a little bit more. second course we have Korean noodles. Would you like to um, tell me how they taste? <laughs> you can see in the last couple hours that the crowd has really thickened a good deal. <laughs> Well, this is just a little bit of room service here, and uh, um, <laughs> we've got this one. Ruth, oh dear, what are you eating down there? I can hardly begin to tell you, but the New Zealand cuisine is so imaginative and so beautiful, so nicely presented. I was expecting it to be more like English cooking, and pardon me, but it's not. So Thank life goodness. is good. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, let's try again tomorrow. Well, the wind's blowing like hell, but we are out right on the end of the... Okay, maybe they've got a cup of coffee up there, right? Well, I did find a cup of coffee, and also I found an albatross, but this albatross is right here in the coffee shop. I'm not sure that we're going to see any outside because the wind was so severe that I had to tack twice to get up the hill here. into Dunedin on the Otago Peninsula from the um, Albatross Sanctuary 
and we're at Larnet Castle, the only castle in New Zealand built by a Scotsman who blew his brains out later on. I don't know if it had anything to do with building the castle or not. It was begun in 1871 and completed in 1887. It has the only hanging Georgian staircase in the Southern Hemisphere. Keep talking. Uh, he imported many European workers to uh, finish the inside of the castle and their beautiful gardens around it and uh, a spectacular view of uh, Otago Harbor from the turret. Let's go to the turret, right? We're, we're up um, on the turret above Larnet Castle. We're 1,050 feet above sea level. Uh, off my left shoulder is Otago Harbor and the city of Dunedin. The harbor is long. It's really uh, a fjord created by glacial actions. Across the way is the settlement of Port Chalmers, which I believe is where the Star of India came when she brought uh, settlers to uh, New Zealand. I believe her usual put-in port was Port Chalmers. And we're looking out there, the ship, ship, ship channel out through there, out to the heads. On the right, we can see where the albatross colony is, where we were. We can see the mole that uh, protects the inlet from the buildup of sand. Are we still on? How about what's over and back here? Okay. That must be the Pacific, right? Yes, the Pacific. With um, along the coast, there there are cliffs that rise 700 feet. And this is the very tippity top of the castle, right here, right? Right. Okay, thank you for that information. Well, isn't this just Ducky? Another inhabitant of the greenhouse area. Well, it's Monday in San Diego. It's uh, going on 3 o'clock, I guess. Actually, uh, by our time, it's tomorrow about noon. Anyway, we spent about 24 hours getting home. This is my hat, which I guess is the souvenir par excellence. It has buttons from almost everywhere we went. And it's a good thing I got the buttons because it gets kind of windy in, in New Zealand. And this helped, the, all the buttons help weigh the hat down, keep it on my head. What else do you have over there? Well, it's just amazing the amount of stuff we managed to bring home without realizing it. Um, a hat. Uh, several t-shirts, including two from a surf shop that Jamie knew about, or rather a town where the surf is particularly good on the Tasman Sea. Um, King found a little airplane that he can use as a prototype. This is the bag I've been carrying around on my shoulder for, well, going three and a half weeks. And we got some grown and processed in New Zealand yarn for sweaters and Scarfs, a flag, of course. Um, some of the carved bone pendants. Um, typical Maori thing. Here's another one that's been stained green. Uh, some uh, things made out of the, the nice woods that they have in, in New Zealand. This is Rimu, which you see a lot of. Here's a little kiwi carved out of the jade that you see everywhere. Uh, the happy hens, they're made in a, in a place that we drove through on Sunday near Dunedin. Here's a little um, kiwi, one of the symbols of New Zealand. This is made out of Rimu too. And a little rubber lamb. Some of the wonderful preserves. This is King's hat that um, after he lost the two caps he took, we had to get something to protect him. Uh, I've never seen green seashells before, but we picked these up in the Bay of Islands, and they really are green. This beautiful scallop shell, and here's a piece of the abalone shell that the Maoris used to make so many decorative things, and you do see it everywhere. I got 
these two bracelets to give to people. They and they have the the um, what the what the Maoris call Pawa shell, which is really the abalone. Uh, and here's a little bracelet with a some of it, and a necklace with a pendant. How of many it. rolls of film do you have there? I don't. We're not counting. It's too <laughs> embarrassing. And okay. we were in a gift shop in Dunedin and talking about how we needed to get some things for the people who are taking care of our dog. Well, look what they came up with. New Zealand, thanks for looking after the dog. And it doesn't say what this is made out of, but I suspect it's Rimu. More shirts, uh, cutting board, some chocolate coins like the New Zealand coins. Um, some New Zealand honey and candy, Maori music. Oh, this is a this piece of stone is a leopard skin jasper, which um, we bought at the at the uh, craft fair, the street fair that was going on in Dunedin on Saturday. I thought that was particularly lovely, and I have somebody in mind for that. Perfect. I think that'll do it. Thank okay. you very much. That's the end of our trip.